scientific attitudes and society. So let's take a look at scientific attitudes. Recall that scientific methodology starts with observations and questions about the natural world. Where do these questions come from? Well, in short, they come from scientific attitudes. A scientific attitude includes curiosity, skepticism, open-mindedness, and creativity. And this leads to new ideas. When we talk about curiosity being a scientific attitude, we mean like an example would be a curious researcher may look at a salt marsh and wonder, why is it growing here? And or what is this plant? When we talk about the scientific attitude of skepticism, well, good scientists refuse to accept ideas or hypotheses without evidence. They question existing ideas. If a scientist disagrees with a hypothesis, they'll set up an experiment to test it or vice versa. Open-mindedness. This scientific attitude is when scientists must be willing to accept different ideas that may not agree with their hypothesis. And the last one is creativity. Researchers need to think creatively to design experiments that yield accurate data. These are the four scientific attitudes. Practical problems. Well, ideas for scientific ideas sometimes arise from practical problems. An example of this would be salt marshes play a role in ecological and commercial organisms that are important. Well, this brings up the issue. Should they be protected? Should they be developed? Technology, science, and society, they're all closely linked together. An advance in one, whether it being an advance in technology, an advance in science, an advance in society, is going to lead to an advancement in another. An example would be in the field of genetics and biotechnology. It's now possible to mass produce complex substances like vitamins, antibiotics, and hormones. Before, the only way to get these would be naturally. So before the technological advancement, those complex substances that we talked about, vitamins, antibiotics, hormones, they were only available naturally. Reviewing and sharing ideas. Well, scientists may focus on a single study for months or even years. When they are done, they share them with the scientific community and this is called peer review. The findings are published and in peer review, the papers are reviewed by anonymous independent experts to make sure that the data they have is accurate. Peer review allows scientists to evaluate and test each other's work. The peer reviewers provide expert assessments to ensure science's high standards. A peer reviewed paper doesn't mean that it is correct, but it meets the high standards set in the scientific community. Peer reviewers look for oversights, unfair influences, fraud, or mistakes in techniques or reasoning. The scientific findings may spark new questions, which can lead to new experiments and new findings. Scientific theories. A lot of people misunderstand theory. We're going to talk about what it is right now. A theory is not a guess or a hypothesis. A theory is an explanation for why something happens. A theory ties several hypotheses which have been tested together. If you hear someone say, I have a theory, they mean I have a hunch or hypothesis. If someone says, that's just a theory, they do not understand what the word theory means in science. Darwin's observations and hypotheses about change over time in nature grew and expanded for several years before he collected them into a theory of evolution by natural selection. No theory is considered absolute truth because science is always evolving and new data may come out to revise or replace the theory. A theory can become the dominant view among scientists, but you've got to remember a theory can change. Here's an example of some theories. When people say, I don't believe in theories, you can ask them about this. What about the heliocentric theory? That says the earth rotates around the sun. It explains why the earth rotates around the sun. Germ theory. We know we get sick because the spread of disease and or sickness is caused by germs. Those are two examples of theories. All right, moving along into science and society. Scientific information is needed to answer society questions, society's questions. Should we use solar power? Wind power? Should we burn fossil fuels? What do we do with chemical waste? Questions like those above that we just talked about 
cannot be answered by science alone. Society plays a role with science to answer those questions. Scientific explanations include why something happens and doesn't include ethical or moral viewpoints. Science can tell us how life operates and changes, but science does not tell us the purpose of life or why we exist. And this is a limitation of science. Bias influences a particular preference or point of view that is personal rather than scientific. We got to make sure when we're doing science that we stick to the facts and the data and that we don't put our personal point of view or our personal preference inside that data. That is what bias is. Misinterpreted, misinterpreted data can be misapplied by those who want to push an idea or point. By understanding science, which can make sure science is applied without bias and in ways that benefit humanity. Don't think about memorizing scientific facts or ideas, but understand them. Know how to understand science and how to use science. As long as people wonder about science, it will always be changing and updating. Remember, science is not just facts and ideas, but a body of knowledge. Science is a way of knowing. Understanding science allows you to think like a scientist and use science, which helps make complex decisions that affect all of society in the entire world. Scientists make recommendations to our government, but they do not make the decisions the general public, which is our democracy, does. Becoming informed can allow you to make an informed decision rather than an unfounded, biased decision. Become educated and make a well-informed decision. This is why it's important to understand how science works and appreciate both the power and the limitation of science. Remember, science doesn't answer questions like why we exist or the purpose of life. That's it for this one. If you have any questions, you can always email me or leave a comment below, and we'll see you guys next time.